Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome, fellow drinks to society. Welcome, all you rock dwellers. Welcome, all you hateful, raceful, racist people who celebrate the president. Welcome to the Conservative Commandos radio show. You're always welcome here. I'm Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. And joining me today as my co-host is the patriot from the Battleborn State, the Silver State of Nevada, and that's Sharon Angle. Sharon, welcome back to Conservative Commandos. Thanks, Rick. Well, it's always great to be here and always uh, interesting to find that Saul Alinsky, although he's dead, he's still alive and well in the Democrat Party. Never let a crisis go to waste, right? Never. And even if there's not a crisis today, you might dig one up from two years ago and <laughs> and expand on that for a while. And that's exactly what Joe Biden did. On Tuesday, he went back and looked at the Las Vegas Strip Massacre. It's the two-year anniversary of that October 1st uh attack and he wanted to make a point that as president he's going to make sure he gets those guns off the streets mm. he's going to make it uh his his uh his duty to uh get the most deadly uh weapons off the street and here's the interesting thing though mr biden often champions Gun control, the Obama-Biden administration record on guns, does not outshine Mr. Trump's. With at least 41 mass shootings when Mr. Biden was in the White House and no major gun laws enacted or executive actions taken. So, hello, Mr. Biden. If you had your chance to do whatever you said you were going to do about guns, you wouldn't do it then. We don't believe you. That's what the... The Democrats should be saying, but it, it's kind of interesting that there were 41 attacks during those years, and so far there's only been 20 uh, with Trump. So he does have a better record on this. And, of course, Mr. Trump says, arm yourselves, protect yourselves, defend yourselves. So, uh, But I thought it was just really interesting that Biden would uh, take that crisis, I guess, resurrect it. And make this big promise, which he couldn't keep, which he couldn't keep in the first place when they made it in the Obama Biden years. Um, so that was one thing that I thought was interesting. Well, I Sharon, can't something something like I have to reach over my shoulder here, and uh, talking about guns and gun rights and whatever. Our friends at the National Association for Gun Rights have supplied me with a new hat. I retired. I have retired my old hat that says, trust me, I'm a river guide. And uh, I am now going to be wearing the hat that's supplied to me by the National Association for Gun Rights. You know, here on Conservative Commandos, we're very proud. We're very proud to support gun rights. They've also sent a couple of really nice T-shirts to me. Firearms anywhere and everywhere. Thank you for that. And also another shirt. Free men do not ask permission to bear arms. So I want to thank the National Association for Gun Rights for those gifts, Sharon Engel. And I think uh, they're on the way to you also. Well, that'll be great. Gratefully received. We we like the Second Amendment out here in the West. Yeah. Um, as as we do in every place in the heartland of America, we we appreciate our founding fathers. We do, Sharon. I know you want to talk about something else. And uh, yes, <laughs> last February, on our way to Washington for CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, we stopped at a rest area. In, in in Maryland, as you remember, and I pointed out to you these electric vehicle charging stations. There was about there was over a dozen of them there. And by the way, none of them were being used at the time. And I know you have a, a little bit of news about these charging stations and electric vehicles. 
Well, that's right, in the state of Washington. So we're not in Washington, D.C., but the state of Washington, not California. I was surprised it wasn't California, but Be there uh, it is Washington State. We'll have to, ele- hybrid vehicle owners, these ones with their electric cars, will have to start paying an annual $75 car tab fee. I always love the word fee. Of course, I had a friend in the legislature that said a fee is just a tax, so don't call it a fee you know, anything but a fee, to finance electric charging stations that they'll never use. The little-known increase is labeled hybrid vehicle transportation electrification. And uh, this is on top of, so this is $75 a year that they're going to have to pay for these hybrid vehicle transportation electrification fee. But get this, this is on top of a uh, $150 state road fund in lieu of gas taxes. So they they see that these electric car owners are not paying their gas taxes, so they're going to get them $150 a year for their, not paying their gas taxes, and now they're going to get um, $75 more so that they can have an electrification fee for a total of $225 a year extra on their car registration and these were supposed to be good for the environment, good for everything uh, that uh, we need in this country. Uh, <laughs> it's just incredible. I, you know, they had one, uh, one guy that owns one of these cars. He said, I was totally baffled, said Brian Cook of Shelton Mason County, who received a vehicle registration renewal notice last week in his October 2020 tabs for his 2010 Toyota Prius. It's just another add-on, especially if you're retired. You're on a budget, and if $75 is taken out of your budget, you have to work around it. So now they're starting to cry. Here the the Prius owner finally figured it out that they want him to get into this electric car, so now they can tax it once more. Once more, we see Democrats in action. If If it moves, tax it. If it doesn't move, kick it. And then tax it. <laughs> Kick it, make it move, and then tax it. So here we go again. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald Reagan, for that little piece of information. You know, Sharon, yeah. oh, okay, here once again, I don't feel necessarily feel bad for the owners of hybrid and electric vehicles. After all, the rest of us have to pay road taxes, okay? And, oh, liberals, they, they love that. Everything has to be fair and equal. Well, there you go. Fair and equal, you pay your fair share. Another thing, by putting an additional tax, what I think that's going to do is that's going to slow down. Slow down the market for electric vehicles. You know, it's something that they're pushing. They want to push us into electric vehicles. I think California has an edict that says within the next 10 years, the the car fleet in California will be 100% electric. Well, this is going to, I think, slow that down, which I don't necessarily care about. But the other thing, Sharon Engel, there you go. Elections have consequences. You get, you you deserve what you vote for. And here you go, Washington. Washington, you might as well call that Northern California. Washington, the state of Washington. You voted for these people. Sorry about that, but you voted for these people, and these are the consequences. More taxes, more fees, whatever you call it. Like Sharon said, it's always a tax. They deserve well, what they get, Sharon Engel. I'd like, to, I'd like to say, though, that this $225 coming out once a year, is hurt. It, it puts that price tag on the tax. The rest of us pay a tax every time we go to the gas pump, but we don't see it. We see it as the price of gasoline rather than all of these state taxes Mm -hmm. and county taxes and, Mm -hmm. you know, all the road taxes are put into this. Uh, You know, here in Reno, our gasoline is uh, nearly $4 a gallon. But I can drive, I I can drive out, I can drive out across the county line and get it for under three so there you go it's at least 50 to 60 cents higher in my county than it is in the neighboring county and it's all because of the taxes and see if we were 
allowed to just add those taxes up and say, this is what it's really costing you in taxes. Same thing with the income taxes. If we could, instead of having them automatically taken out of your paycheck, if you had to pay those taxes, the the elections would have a different outcome, I believe, because people would see that money just like this guy saw that $75 go out of his budget. We need to see our tax dollars going out of our budget so that we can say to our representatives, no more taxes. We need to stop the spending. And that's on both sides of the aisle, Rick. That's both that. sides of the aisle. Sharon, we need to take a break. You are listening and watching the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. Today's show, like all our shows, is brought to you by the First Amendment, protected by the Second. Thank you, National Association for Gun Rights, for our gifts. We'll be right back and tell you who our guests are. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. And welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. Hallmark of our show is great guests. We've done that over the last 11 years. We intend to do that entering our 12th and onward from here. But if you'd like to recommend a guest, or maybe you'd like to be a guest, maybe you're a writer and author, conservative thinker, and you want to be on our show, it's easy to do. Just send an email to me directly. It's rick at conservativecommandosradioshow.com. I know it's long, but it's easy. It's just Rick at Conservative Commandos Radio Show dot com. Put in a subject line guest or guest recommendation. Always love to have new guests on with us. And with that, Sharon, 
talking about guests. We have three great guests joining us today. We do. Our first guest is a longtime friend of the show, Tim Bryce, who has the Bryce's right. And he also has written several books. Um, One of those books is Senior Moments. We've asked him to come on today and talk about impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? So that's our first guest, Tim Bryce. Second guest, Marlo Lewis, another longtime friend of the show, is a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Marlo is, of course, published all over the place with CEI. But today we're asking him to talk about the Environmental Protection Agency says to California, clean up your act. It's going to be uh, interesting to see what the one, two, three punch of the EPA is against California. And finally, we have a longtime friend of Rick Trader's, Ben Johnson, the Reverend Ben Johnson, who is the managing editor of Acton Institute's flagship publication, Religion and Liberty. And Ben has written a historical article which has uh, deep um, impacts for today, lessons for today. It's called Hong Kong Protesters Shot as Chinese Communism Turns 70. How mm-hmm. fitting. Yeah, it's, it's a terrific article, and I think it should be the, the basis for a documentary, or it should be used in schools to really teach students what socialism is. And, you know, in my opinion, socialism is just another word for communism. It's a great article. It's great. To, it's going to be great to have the Reverend Ben Johnson join us today. Well, Sharon, the Conservative Commandos radio show, as I mentioned, have been mentioning throughout this week this is our 11th anniversary we're starting our 12th year of broadcast excellence here at the conservative commandos radio network we are under the guise of the fcc that means there are certain words that we cannot use but cnn doesn't fall under that rule does it not at all and it's interesting we often (laughs) have to bleep ourselves just because we get on we get on some rants and well, I don't and know stuff about you, out, Sharon, right? I don't know about <laughs> you. I don't think we've ever had to bleep you, but maybe me once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> well and anyway we do we do try to watch what we say around here Definitely. because of the FCC. There is a Uh, You can violate it by using certain words. And yet we've been noticing and, in fact, had a guest on our show who talked about the vile discourse, the the language, the rhetoric that has just gone up and up and up. And, of course, De Niro was on um, uh, CNN, and he's been dropping F-bombs during these live national news broadcast but it's justified i found out why they can do that because this article says this is cable it's not an fcc violation even if it's on sunday morning so there just have to go cable rick well i wonder if the fc and i'm i'm anti-government regulation and let me say that we try not to say anything off color not just for fcc regulations but just common decency I think that you can, there are more than enough words in the English language that you can use. There are about seven of them you shouldn't use in public. So in my opinion, it's just common decency. And as I said, I'm not for more government regulation, Sharon, but maybe what's good for the goose is good for the gander. That what people say, maybe what people say on cable should apply the same law should apply, the same regulation should apply to cable as it does to over-air broadcasts. What, what's your thoughts on that, Sharon? Well, I think your first thought was the best thought, which is common decency. Uh, you know, my mother said you there, there are all kinds of women, but there are not all women are ladies. Hmm. And ladies use... Um, use good words they know how to talk and and are decent and i think that that's the thing that our culture is lacking these days is just that common decency you know it it doesn't really matter whether you have freedom of speech it's you know and and i i think about the liberals they're so offended but they don't 
think about how much they offend me with their language. I don't mind them having a differing opinion, but I certainly would like it if they would respect me enough to express that opinion in a decent way. I totally agree with that. Sharon, we need to take our next break and get our first guest on. And you are listening to the, the and watching the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network. This week, proudly, proudly starting our 12th year of broadcast excellence. On the other side, we're going to be talking with Tim Bryce. He's the host of The Bryce is Right. He's written a terrific article, Impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? Don't go away. We'll find out right after this break. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. AM FM 24-7 Roku Channel broadcasts all of our shows on demand. To ensure reliability, we store and stream our content on the same servers as Netflix and Amazon. Our Roku channel is free to use, and anyone owning one of the more than 10 million Roku devices can watch our channel at no cost whatsoever. If you have a television show or are thinking about producing a show, you can be a part of AMFM 24-7's Roku channel. Watch our great shows on your Roku device. It's free and more reliable than cable TV. Are you stuck with a timeshare? Did you attend the presentation and were seduced and enticed into buying that great vacation and investment? Now you're in the terrible position of trying to figure out a way to get out of that mess. You're not alone. For over 15 years, BuyYourTimeshare.com has been helping people like yourself get out of timeshare ownership. The fact is there is no resale market. Unscrupulous telemarketers call you and say they have buyers waiting and the next thing that happens is you give them hundreds of dollars for an ad and you'll never hear from them again. Another fact is that an identical timeshare to yours is being offered on eBay for a dollar, and no one is buying it. If you want out of your timeshare, I urge you to go to buyyourtimeshare.com or call them at 877-94-HELP-ME. That number again is 877-94-HELP-ME. Buyyourtimeshare.com. That's buyyourtimeshare.com. 877-94-HELP-ME. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. 
Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get DISH. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with DISH TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to DISH now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get DISH TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. We're Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. Once again, for rebroadcast. Of our TV show or of our radio show, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Also, be sure to like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And with that, Sharon, we do have our first guest with us. He's a very familiar face with us and our guest. Please make him feel welcome, as you always do. Well, it's always a pleasure to have Tim Bryce. On. He is a freelance writer residing in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, an avid writer and speaker discussing everything from business to management to politics and morality to systems and technology in our ever-changing world. In addition to his columns and blog entitled The Bryce is Right, which is read by thousands of people worldwide, Tim has also published a wide range of publications from the Washington Times to the Huffington Post. And Tim's new book is Senior Moments. It's now available available in printed and ebook form. Tim, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Sharon, it's always good to see you and Rick again. It's nice to be amongst some friends out there. And uh, I, I think this is one of the more, more meaningful dialogues that goes on out over the Internet. Wow. Uh, is the discussions that go on here on uh, Conservative Commandos, they're very important discussions as far as I'm concerned. Thank you well, that, thank Tim. you so much for that, Tim. Uh, we try to make them, but you know what it is, is we try to just ask the right questions and give you the time to make really good answers. And so that's what we're going to do today, too. We have an article here that you posted, Impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? All right. So uh, impeachment. First of all, let's talk about that. Is that a real is that real? I, you know, it, it seems so not real to me. Pelosi won't even go through the right um, process, it seems, to get to impeachment. She's afraid. And it seems like it, even if she does do the right thing or gets to the right game to be played, the Senate is not going to do anything with it anyway. Uh, I heard McConnell say, you know, we have to take it up, but we it does. there's no rule on how long we can take it up for. So is it real? Well, I, number one, she uh, kind of botched it. She should have gone to the whole House of Representatives to do a general vote on whether we should move forward with this impeachment investigation or not. She didn't do that. She just took it upon herself as Madam Secretary or whatever and uh, tried to push it along the way. I think it was one of the one of her biggest Biggest mistakes that she's ever made. You know, I said since 2016 that, you know, impeachment is going to be irresistible to the Democrats. They just can't help themselves. And I've had a lot of Democrat friends, oh, no, no, this will never go that far. I'll never go that far. I said, you watch, it's going to happen, not that. And I now that they've opened up Pandora's box, I think they've realized they've made a horrible mistake because um, so much stuff is going to come falling out of this thing. Um, I think what we have learned through all of this is, number one, Pelosi uh, has got horrible leadership skills. Um, she should never have let this happen. She kowtowed to the far left. Uh, and yes, and number two, the Democrat Party is fractured, which is what I wrote about last week. I mean, we have the far left versus the, uh, the moderates. And I'll tell you, the moderates are not in bed with the uh, far left on this thing. They know they're probably not going to vote for Donald Trump. But you know what? They're not going to vote for the zaniness of the far left. I think a lot of them are going to stay home. And we most likely will see the party split after this election. 
And I think they also what just What party is that, Tim? The Democrats. The Democrat I think it's going to split. It's going to morph into either something far left or another one for the moderates. they got to have something separate. Well, they Sharon, if I could interrupt. realize how much damage they've done. Sharon, if I could interrupt for a minute, we've heard that before. Right. Remember, we've heard that from our good friend, Dr. Gerard Lamero, mm -hmm. who said that exact same thing. Well, so this is what's happening with a lot of moderate old Democrat friends of mine. You know, they, I keep telling them, look, this is not the Democrat Party that you grew up with. This is not the same thing. It has gone yeah. very far left. Oh, Tim, Tim, you don't understand. This is, you know, it hasn't changed at all. And there's nothing to worry about here, you know, and so on like that. And I keep coming back at him and says, guys, you have no idea what's going on with your own party. And they've also killed Joe Biden's chances of becoming president, too, as a part of that. Because now, if, once they go into these investigations, hey, the Republicans can issue subpoenas just as fast as the Democrats can. And uh, I, I think they're going to rue the day they do this. Bottom line, Trump is right. This is a, an attempted coup. I, and my article today, I, I've heard from a lot of people who really liked it. But I also heard from a lot of Democrats saying, oh, well, you're so off base on this thing. There's all kinds of uh, issues against Trump, you know, even if this thing is not true. And I said, like what? Like what? Bottom line, they just don't like him. That's plain and simple. They don't like him. I, and I get that. I, I understand that. But you don't get impeached for not being liked. That's not part of the game. The impeachment process was to take somebody who is really, you know, a threat to the country and to the Constitution to take that person out to the woodshed, you know. But that's not what they're doing. They're trying to do it strictly for political purposes, trying to make Mr. Trump look bad. And the, the American people are not dummies. They're tired of Mueller investigation. They're already tired of this investigation. And I, I think they're going to rue the day uh, that they ever brought this thing on up. You know, as you can see, I think if you want to mess with the eagle, hey, you better learn to fly first. I don't think they know what they're dealing with with Donald Trump. They really don't get it. Well, and I, I'm surprised, I guess, because I have a congressman. He's a Republican, and he's the, now the first Republican to come out in favor of impeachment. And it's, it, he says he's just in favor of the process, that they should have the investigation, blah, blah, blah. It's a very political thing. But um, as... We we look at this, Tim, as a Republican. I I like you think the Democrats are going to hang themselves. Why would a Republican even stick his neck out on this issue? Why would he even discuss it? I mean, we have a president. We have several states that are saying we're not even going to have a primary or a caucus because we already have our nominee. This thing is pretty much decided on the Republican side. Why would a Republican even? Do, uh, have a have anything to say about this? Well, this Republican friend of yours, uh, well, I don't know if it's really a friend or not, an acquaintance, maybe I should say. Um, again, I always push these people on this. And what? What has he done? Why do you want to have this impeachment inquiry go on? Uh, is it, what is the rationale behind it? Do you think there's any legitimacy in uh, what you what came on out by the whistleblower? And I've read that statement, and you've read that statement, you know, all that stuff. It's nonsense. It's pure nonsense. They have nothing out there. So I would press him again and say, why in the world do you want to see this go forward? Don't you think we have better things to do, like immigration, the infrastructure, the national debt, uh, on and on and on? There's all kinds of things. This, the 116th Congress, is going to go down in the history books as the most ineffectual Congress of all time, as if the 115th was much better, but 116th is going to be the absolute worst out of that. And uh, there's no excuse for this. The Congress is not doing the people's work, plain and simple. This is all about witch hunts and coup attempts. You know, that's really what it is. Plain and simple. And and when a Republican steps up and takes any side with the Democrats, this is this is what uh, Harry Reid did uh, masterfully, is right. he was able to get peel just a couple of Republicans off so that when he went to the press, he could say this is a bipartisan action. This is uh -huh. something that is bipartisan. And now this Republican from Nevada has given Pelosi the bipartisan uh, argument. And I, I don't get it. What do you think about that? I mean, are there legs to that? I mean, certainly well, Harry Reid thought there were. 
You know what disturbs me, and I'm, I'm going to write about this next week. Um, I, I think Mr. Trump is going to run away the election. It's, it's going to be a wipeout. But let's suppose for a moment that the Democrats won instead. What has happened over the last few years? They have given us a blueprint on terms of how to obstruct and harass the president of the United States, how to delay uh, uh, appointments of key personnel out there, how to tie up uh, executive decisions in the courts, on and on and on. So let's assume it got switched over to the Democrats. You think the Republicans are just going to go into the night because the Democrats will only offer a socialist agenda. And I don't know any Republican out there, including Mitt Romney, who could absolutely uh, accept a socialist agenda. And so they're going to be using all of those same routines that the Democrats did. There'll be obstruction, there'll be harassment, there'll be all of that type of stuff. The only difference is the press will always be on the Democrat side. But at the end of the day, you know, when this is all done, um, we still wouldn't have attended to the business of the country. And that is what scares me. We're not taking care of business. And, uh, you know, thank God we had the, uh, the tax break thing. We got that pushed on through. But there was so much more we have got to do. And we have got to quit screwing around with all of these witch hunts. Well, it seems like the only one that's getting anything done is Trump. Right. And when you start talking about the Congress, it's in gridlock, has been in gridlock since Obama, pretty much. And it looks like even if Trump has that runaway, as you explain it, will we have anything but gridlock uh, after 2020? What do you what do you foresee Should with we? the future of this Congress? They seem to have no courage and it, gridlock seems to be their game. That's a good question. And. One of the things the Democrats, if I was a Democrat in all of these uh, red states that Trump pulled in and I am going to go vote for having uh, impeachment and so on like that, you can kiss your job goodbye because people are not going to put up with it. And I think there's something like 23 seats that are up there for grab in the Trump country of these House. It's very, very realistic uh, that we could take back the House. If we take back the House and we hold on to the Senate like that, well, hey, maybe we can go forward. But, you know. You know, I've been a, a Republican since 1972, uh, love the guys, but if they can't get off their butts and really start moving things, you know, uh, you know Ryan was a, a very nice guy. You know, Paul Ryan was nice, but he was not a mover and shaker. We need a mover and shaker. What the Republicans should be doing right now, and we heard about this the other day, you know, was uh, uh, with the contract with America has was been 25 years ago. That was the most brilliant thing. If we came on up right now, the Republicans sat up and had a contract with America issuing, saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we'd run away with it all. What have the Democrats got? He says, we're going to have a socialism, uh, socialist agenda, and we have Trump bashing. That's it. Wow. If they came on up with a contract with America. But my point is, in the Republican Congress on the House, I don't see the leadership, except for maybe... Uh, uh, the one caucus over there, you know, uh, with the George. Freedom Caucus. That's Freedom, right. Freedom I was, Caucus. I was going to say, from your your lips, Tim Bryce, to the ears of Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan. And with that, yes. we're going to have to go to a break. We're coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network studios and around the world on the internet with TalkStream Live, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, American Political Radio, Leading Edge Radio Network, and AM FM 24-7. And now you can watch us on the AUN TV network in Northern California, specifically Pelosi Country, San Francisco. We have been talking with our guest, Tim Bryce of The Bryce is Right, about impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? I'm Sharon Angle, and I'm here with my co-host, Rick Trader will be right back. AM FM 24-7 Roku Channel broadcasts all of our shows on demand. To ensure reliability, we store and stream our content on the same servers as Netflix and Amazon. Our Roku Channel is free to use, and anyone owning one of the more than 10 million Roku devices can watch our channel at no cost whatsoever. If you have a television show or are thinking about producing a show, you can be a part of AMFM 24-7's Roku channel. Watch our great shows on your Roku device. It's free and more reliable than cable TV. Are you stuck with a timeshare? Did you attend the presentation and were seduced and enticed into buying that great vacation and investment? 
Now you're in the terrible position of trying to figure out a way to get out of that mess. You're not alone. For over 15 years, BuyYourTimeshare.com has been helping people like yourself get out of timeshare ownership. The fact is there is no resale market. Unscrupulous telemarketers call you and say they have buyers waiting, and the next thing that happens is you give them hundreds of dollars for an ad, and you'll never hear from them again. Another fact is that an identical timeshare to yours is being offered on eBay for a dollar, and no one is buying it. If you want out of your timeshare, I urge you to go to buyyourtimeshare.com or call them at 877-94-HELP-ME. That number again is 877-94-HELP-ME. Buyyourtimeshare.com. That's buyyourtimeshare.com. 877-94-HELP-ME. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. And once again, as always, we want to thank you for staying with us, as you have for the last 11 years, and hopefully you will going through our 12, 13, 14, or however farther we go this is the conservative commandos radio show i'm rick trader my co-host is sharon angle and want to give a shout out to folks who listen to us on watch it and watch us on stations in jacksonville tampa in the villages florida las vegas and reno macon georgia lancaster and pittsburgh boulder colorado springs milwaukee long beach california arlington virginia washington dc and as sharon said as as she has said many times and also seen on the AUN television network in places like San Francisco, Sacramento, San Jose, Redding, Marin Valley, Chico, Wine Country, Silicon Valley. You get it, Northern California. Our guest this, uh, this afternoon is the gentleman with the, the, I'm not saying that's an angel on his shoulder, unless it's an angel with a dirty face, uh, but uh, Tim Bryce is our guest, and uh, Tim is the host of The Bryce is Right. He's also an author. His books are Senior Moments, which is now available in print and, and e-book form. Tim, you also have a new book out. Uh, yeah, it's uh, How to Manage a Nonprofit Organization. And uh, that one's doing very well as well. It's more of a how-to book. The other one is more entertaining out there as well. Right. Well, Tim, a uh, great article, by the way, Impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? And, you know, Tim, I, I've said all along, uh, it, this is not about impeachment. This whole thing is not about impeachment. I think it is to crash the, to crash the stock markets, to destroy our economy, to destroy get things the going bad in in doing so, and to defeat Trump in 2020, that's really what it's all about. And Tim, I believe with you that this idea of impeachment is a bad idea. Look how unpop unpopular it was in the 1990s, 1998, I believe it was, when Republicans tried to impeach Bill Clinton. The American people did not like that. The American people did not want their election overturned. The American people did not like their country in turmoil. And that's what removing a president in the middle of his term does. I mean, that's what it did in 19, uh, what was it, 1973. When Richard Nixon was removed in the middle of his term, our country no, no, was no, in no, turmoil. No. He wasn't removed. He quit. Well, I'm sorry. He quit. Exactly. Well, you're right about that. Thank you for correcting me. 
<laughs> I don't mind being corrected when someone can come through with the facts, which you just did. But this is something that I believe is going to come back and bite the Democrats in the butt. The American people don't want their president removed through impeachment, through resignation. They want a smooth running. Uh, is, let, let's face it. This is not the best form of government, but it's the best form of government ever created on this blue green, green planet. Tim, I'll let you respond to that. Uh, let me make a, a comment on that. Understand this. The Democrats really do not like the, our form of government. They do not like the Constitution. They want to rewrite the Constitution, come up with something else. In fact, they want more of a monarchy than they do want to have a republic. The idea of a republic, it does not appeal to them whatsoever. Number one, they think they're smarter than that and they want more control. All of this is about control, nothing else. Control of the, of the country and everything else to create a federal bureaucracy that would just strangle everybody. I wouldn't want to live here if that monarchy got in. They would figure out who the Supreme Court uh, justices are. They would take them all out. You know, and something back going back to Richard Nixon in, uh, back in 75, 76 and uh, I, I've done a lot of traveling in my life. I've been all over the world, you know, consulting and, and doing stuff. Everywhere I went, though, uh, people would say to me, why in the world did you guys get rid of Richard Nixon? Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? And he says he was the best, one of the best presidents you ever had. And I've got friends out there now. I says, well, Trump, Trump is uh, he's hated here in this country. He's hated overseas. He's got all of this bad karma and all this. Like, no, he's not. No, he's not. And, and, you know, you say these things over and over again, and the Democrats believe them. And they're suckers out there. No, the rest of the world understands exactly what's going on. Everybody wishes, including uh, the Ukraine, they had a Donald Trump running their country. Right. In fact, Donald Trump is, is extremely popular in Israel. I mean, they're naming settlements and streets after Donald Trump in Israel. Right. Yeah. Tim, let's talk, uh, and you and Sharon mentioned him a little bit, uh, Joe Biden. And let's broaden this conversation to include this Ukraine mess. Uh, I do believe that this, this Ukraine mess is going to sink O'Biden. Any, any chance for an O'Biden candidacy? And, you know, Tim, I believe that there are two people out there that could potentially beat Donald Trump. And one of those is Joe Biden. Uh, by sinking Joe Biden, I do believe unless this other person comes to the surface, and I won't mention the name of Michelle Obama, but I believe that uh, by not having Biden at the top of the ticket, if you want to have a Sanders, if you want to have a Warren, if you want to have a Buddha judge, that ticket cannot win. I think that, do you think that there may be some sort of a conspiracy against Joe Biden from those oh, yeah. who don't want sad old sloppy Uncle Joe anymore, the foot-in-the-mouth guy, the guy that uh, gropes women, whatever. That and, uh, You know, Tim, it seems to me that whenever Democrats have been successful, it's not with an old guy like a Joe Biden or somebody who's been around a long time like Walter Mondale, but it's the fresh face in the crowd. It's a Bill Clinton. It's a Barack Obama. Somebody that hasn't been around for years that people know enough about to say, I don't want this guy. I don't want this guy. And that it may be intentional what the Democrats are doing to smear Trump, to get rid of him, to smear Biden, get rid of him. And let's bring in one of these young new socialists that not, not a lot of people know a lot about. Am I, Tim, am I thinking too far outside the box on this? Your well, you know, Biden is not one of them. Biden is a moderate. They don't want them. In fact, I think, in my uh, opinion, I think this whole Donnybrook started up uh, by the Democrats uh, to undermine Joe Biden, to get Biden out. Think maybe they can kill two birds with one stone, get rid yeah. of Biden, maybe get rid of uh, Trump at the same time. Yeah. Um, and what's going to happen is it's, well, I, this one may seem crazy, but Elizabeth Warren, yeah, she's going to get it. You've probably heard today that uh, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, has stopped 
Yeah, all he's in hospital. He's he had heart problems. He's in hospital. hospital. He's that's, they, that's uh, gonna be a bad uh, issue. Yeah, they suspended yeah. his campaign. Right. You know. Yep. So that, that's going on with that. Yep. And so that means all those voters will go with Elizabeth Warren. Yep. Uh, Joe will be out of the way. And you know who's waiting in the wings for all that? Believe it or not, I think it's going to be good old Hillary is going to come on back, swoop in. I'm going to save Bring the. Her on. Bring her on. Because, again, as I said, the Democrats, the only time they've been successful is with a fresh face. Right. When they've trotted out these these old people like uh, Walter Mondale or, or whatever, they, they've they got okay. their you-know-what's kicked. <laughs> you know, I happen to like uh, Tim Ryan of Ohio. You know, no, he's, he's not a Republican at all, but, man, he got shut down real fast by the party, both when he tried to take over as Speaker of the House and also on the presidential election. He's well, all tied up on that. Well, Tim, and, you know, and, you mentioned— They don't want him involved. They don't—there's your fresh face, yeah, well, and he's Tim, got some good people, but they're not going to let him get anywhere near it. Tim, you mentioned that they want a monarchy. I think they really want as an oligarchy. You know, if you... Hey, Tim Brace. Brace is right. We got to run. We got to go. But before we do, please tell our audience how they could follow your work and get your books. They'll find me on timbrice.com, T-I-M-B-R-Y-C-E, or just look me up anywhere on the internet, Tim Brice, B-R-Y-C-E. I'm all over the place. I got an engagement coming up October 15th. I'll be in the villages over in Ocala, if you're familiar with this side of town. And it's a by big the deal. Way, one of our stations is in the villages. That's right. Go see That's our right. guy, The Bryce is Right, Tim Bryce. Uh, Tim, the books. Guys, it's always been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Well, Tim, the books. Oh, I, I don't, and I don't have them here well, with you, me. Well, tell <laughs> us how to get them. <laughs> I just go to timbrice.com, look for books. You'll see all of the books listed in there. I got like 15 of them on there wow. for everything, technical type of stuff to fun stuff to political stuff. So it's all in there. And, you know, just come to timbrice.com. Believe me, you won't miss it. All right. Tim all right. Rice, thank you so much for joining us. Take care and God bless. Thank you. Well, you know, for years we heard about how wonderful California is on the environmental issues and how progressive they are. Well, we have a we're going to have Marlo Lewis join us. He's from the Competitive Enterprise Institute. He's written a very interesting article about California. The Environmental Protection Agency to California. Clean up your act. We'll be right back with our next guest, Marlo Lewis. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? 
Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it. And folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commanders Radio Show. I'm Rick Trader. My co-host is Sharon Angle. And Sharon, our next guest is with us. The honor of the introduction. It's all yours. <laughs> Once again, it's a pleasure to introduce a longtime friend, Marlo Lewis, Jr., who is a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Marlo has been published in the Washington Times Investors Business Daily, Tech Central Station, National Review, among others. He has appeared on various television and radio programs, and his ideas have been featured in radio commentary by Rush Limbaugh and G. Gordon Liddy. Prior to joining CEI, he served as Director of External Relations at the Reason Foundation. And during the 106th Congress, Marlo served as Staff Director of the House Government Reform Subcommittee on National Economic Growth, Natural Resources, and Regulatory Affairs. Marlo, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Rick. Well, we have an article here. Environmental Protection Agency to California. Clean up your act. I thought California had their act all cleaned up. I mean, that's been the uh, push, I guess, of all of these great laws that we see coming out of California over and over and over again. Uh, right down to right now, they want to go completely green in their energy. But uh, the EPA says not so, not so fast, California. What's going on over there? Yeah, this is a humorous situation, and as you probably both uh, have been following, California and the Trump administration have been in a spat for many months uh, over fuel economy standards, over climate policy. Um, let's see, what else have they been feuding about? Well, of course, over other issues that I, I don't really work on here at CEI, like immigration. but. Uh, California, for a long time, has traded on its authority as an environmental leader and basically has held itself up as a model to the world. And California thinks of itself as the world climate leader. You know, if you want to save the planet, you've got to be more like us. And it is, I think, true that there are very many environmentally conscious people in California who who uh, think that their state is very progressive and on the cutting edge. And so it was kind of amusing that last week, uh, EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler sent two letters to California, one to the, the head of the state's um, Air Resources Board, Mary Nichols. She's the chairman of the California Air Resources Board. And in that one, 
Administrator Wheeler pointed out that the that California was way behind in implementing its um, what are called state implementation plans or SIPs as they're termed here inside the Beltway for coming into compliance with national air quality standards. These are these are air air concentration standards for six common air pollutants, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, both fine and coarse. And anyway, so, uh, I mean, my goodness, he, Mr. Wheeler said that California was way behind on implementing these SIPs. Uh, a lot of them were inactive or no longer applicable. And, uh, and that was just kind of the start of it. And then he also sent a letter to governor, the California governor, uh, Mr. Newsom, uh, on the state's lapses in water quality. And so they pointed out a whole bunch of violations that have occurred for um, industrial sources in California exceeding the industrial pollutants that they are allowed under their permits, you know, multi multitudes of violations of that. And then long-standing problem the funniest one i think was well it's, i mean it's not so funny but that that california basically has been uh, in san francisco area has been dumping about a billion gallons of storm runoff mixed with sewage into the cal into the san francisco bay every year and a lot of this stuff has not been what they call biologically treated which means you know um purged of its microbes and things to make it non-toxic and some of it they said doesn't even meet the low standards of removing floatables i think all of us are familiar with floatables <laughs> i don't want to think about it actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and so anyway and so andrew wheeler sent the governor this letter saying you know I, I, in 30 days i want you to tell me all of them all what you're going to do about all of this and uh and specifying the milestones you will achieve by which date so anyway it's a bit of a it's it's a controversy because uh senator feinstein sticking up for her state weighed in and said well we're not sure which of these lapses and delays in meeting air quality standards is really california's fault and which is epa's fault and i have to say that could be the case because one of my colleagues william yateman did a study in 2016 of course that was the obama epa which found that epa was chronically late sometimes by as much as four years in meeting its statutory obligations under the Clean Air Act, which include the obligations to hold states accountable for coming into compliance with air quality standards. So, I mean, maybe there's, uh, maybe there's, you know, a blame to be shared there. Maybe under Obama, the EPA was so lenient toward Cal towards California that California is now so delinquent. Um, and so I, you know, I, I've tried to track down some data or talk to people who might be able to shed more light on this. And so far, nobody seems to know. And in fact, one of the key terms that's used by Administrator Wheeler in his letter to Mary Nichols about air quality standards is a backlog. In other words, there's this enormous, he says EPA has this huge backlog, 130 backlog state implementation plans under the Clean Air Act. But there's no real statutory definition of that, so it's hard to know who's really responsible. I mean, just from reading his letter, it's hard to know who's really responsible for the backlog. Is that because California, is that, excuse me, is that because the EPA under Obama decided they were much more interested in pursuing climate policy than Clean Air Act enforcement? And so they just let these, uh, they didn't act on these state implementation plans in a timely way? Or is it that they, just allowed California to be slipshod and dilatory um, because uh, they were working hand in glove with California in order to advance the climate agenda? Or is it some more mundane bureaucratic explanation? I don't really know. Well, it seems like uh, Feinstein picked the easy one. To me, I, air quality and, and the, the gripe there, I thought, uh, okay, bureaucratic paperwork, whatever. 
But these other two, I mean, this is a one, two, three punch that this Wheeler dealt out. These other two are kind of hard to shuffle off as a bureaucratic problem, aren't they? I mean, uh, wastewater going into the into the bay and then the streets. I mean, all we have to do is drive five hours from Reno and we can be right in the middle of the muck if we wanted to. That's I mean, right. it's right out there on the street. So what, what, what do they say about those two things? Oh, that's that's very funny. Uh, well, again, it's it's funny if you don't live there. Um, but the the whole point is that we've seen all kinds of newspaper accounts, and actually, I was in San I was in the streets of San Francisco only a, a couple of months ago, so I can verify. I'm an eyewitness to the fact that there's human poop on the sidewalks, and you know people are trying to make sure their dogs don't step in it. Uh, which is uh, all right. And so what we were said is, <laughs> I'm well, right? Isn't that true? I mean, only in, only in beautiful San Francisco now that people have to worry that their dogs might step in human feces. Um, but we, as Wheeler points out, none of this stuff is treated before it goes into water, into the, into the local watersheds and, and, and so on. And so there is a concern that, hey, your homelessness crisis may be also creating environmental risks related to waterborne disease. So he does kind of rub it in a little bit. Well, like I said, it's the one, two, three punch. And, you know, here in Reno, even we're civilized enough to re require that you collect your your dog stuff in a plastic <laughs> bag and dispose of it properly, right. not let it run down the the storm drains so that's right that's right <laughs> with that yeah with so anyway you know california has tried to be has tried to present itself to the world as greener than thou and it has it has traded off this aura uh of of environmental purity in its political endeavors so i think i think maybe one reason that wheeler did this was to um have a little fun but I mean, there are also serious issues he's dealing with here, but the comedy of it all could not possibly have been lost on Andrew Wheeler. I know him. He's a, he's a man with a sense of humor. <laughs> well, I guess we ought to thank him for the good laugh, but we also need to figure out what California is going to do about this. We are talking to Marlo Lewis, who is a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute about an article he wrote, Environmental Protection Agency says to California, clean up your act. We are coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios and around the world on the Internet with TalkStream Live iHeartRadio Tune in, American Political Radio, Leading Edge Radio Network, and AMFM 24-7. We can also be seen on the AUN TV network in Northern California. My co-host today is Rick Trader. I'm Sharon Engel, and we'll be right back. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. 
Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. And once again, we want to welcome you back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Trader. My co-host is Sharon Engel. And our guest is Marlo Lewis. He's a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. We're talking about an article that Marlo wrote, Environmental Protection Agency to California Clean Up Your Act. And Marlo, talking about Clean Up Your Act, we'll try to get this conversation out of the gutter, but we'll, that's not <laughs> that's uh, an aspiration, not a promise. Marlo, I thought it was those dirty, mean Republicans that liked dirty air and dirty water and didn't want to do anything about it. Now we're finding out that clean state, that liberal state, that progressive state of California has its own mess. Well, that's true. And, and you know, um, the, the state also um, had a... Uh, a commission I'm trying to remember the name of it now it's a commission on on uh, fire on wildfires mm-hmm. and it was a blue ri- ribbon commission and they at the end of uh, I think it was I'm trying to remember the date of it now I think that mm-hmm. it, well it was I think it came out this report came out in 2018 mm-hmm. but um, this the the commission found mm-hmm. that the state had just so horribly mismanaged its forests, mm-hmm. and especially by um, effectively banning a practice known as prescribed burning, which is used to clear out underbrush, thin out forests, make them make them less susceptible to uh, less vulnerable to mm-hmm. to massive conflagrations, um, and instead, because they don't do this anymore. I have basically turned the forest floor into this huge fuel bed, just waiting to be ignited by anything, and then mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, spread like wildfire does in any kind of strong wind. And so this commission really thought that California's wildfires were, to a great extent, the fault of mismanagement and neglect of the state's forests. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and yet, of course, Californians are so proud, just justifiably, of the natural beauty, the scenic beauties of their of their state. So I don't know how you, you I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done an in-depth study, but of course, you know, do as I say, not as I do is a human failing. And I'm sure even Californians are susceptible to it. Well, it sounds like you did do your own investigation when you went to San Francisco. You mentioned that the California is growing homeless population with reports of pile of human feces on sidewalks in the streets in Los Angeles and San Francisco are creating new health risks. And of course, I can I don't want to think about when it rains. This stuff is washed into the the storm sewers that ends up in San Francisco Bay. But, you know, Marlo and Sharon, in the realm of, well, you get what you vote for, 
people in San Francisco are actually taking uh, taking it upon their own to do something about it. Uh-huh. A group of San Francisco neighbors said that they had to do something to make their streets safe and cleaner. The answer, they put giant rocks or boulders on the sidewalks. Fed up with what they say as the city's failure to combat homelessness, rampant drug use, and feces on the streets, they're actually now making, making it, putting these big boulders in the way. But, you know, Marla, you know, you and Sharon talked about the, the water. You talked about the air. There's another. We just talked about what's going on with um, right. humans. But you also talked about chemical contamina- contamination is also a problem. Right. Yeah. The um, uh, Administrator Wheeler listed uh, several examples. Uh, the only one that I wrote down was uh, a chemical called indenolopyrene, uh, which is a suspected carcinogen. And, and he, he reported in his letter that um, the emissions of this, this uh, chemical from the city of Los Angeles uh, uh, into, the, into, into the water in Los Angeles exceed federal standards by 420%. There are a whole bunch of others there that mm-hmm. he mentioned. That, that's the, I just wanted to throw that in there as an example of what he was talking about. But he said he identified 23 significant instances of discharges into waters of the United States in wow. exceedance of permit limits. Well, Marlo, maybe one of the problems is maybe there are too many SIPs, or yeah. maybe the SIPs we have don't work, which proves that SIPs don't work. We don't need them. Um, do you believe that maybe could we also look at this? Maybe California is being targeted by, targeted by the Trump EPA to make an example out of them. I mean, California hasn't been too kind to President Trump. Could it be tit for tat? Well, I I don't want to uh, I don't want to. I mean, I have no direct evidence of that. Maybe it's just poetic justice. Maybe maybe because California is the is the biggest state, the most populous state, um, which has the worst air quality through <laughs> no fault of their own. You know, it's, it's basically a matter of, um, of, uh, of the, you know, the meteorology and the topography that concentrates smog and so on. But, um, but it, but it, you know, but, uh, it could be that they have in fact been rather lax about doing about meeting these uh right standards and and implementing what their their legal requirements that's perfectly possible i mean we know for example that they spend a lot of time and energy on stupid stuff you know like for example the bullet train you know which uh is several years behind schedule and something like i don't know 70 billion dollars over budget i've forgotten what the exact figure is but certainly if we if we look to California as a model and, and every state tried to build bullet trains that would be as far behind schedule and as over budget, you know, the country would go broke pretty fast. But bullet trains is one of the environmentalists dreams for um, limiting air travel and other what they think are high carbon intensity modes of transportation. So. You know, you can't do everything. Uh, no. Resources are finite, including attention, uh, including commitment. And so if you try to be the world climate leader uh, and you really make that the, your badge of honor and you put right. a whole lot of effort into that, I think there's going to be less effort into more mundane environmental protection that actually matters a whole lot more to public health. Marlo Lewis, in the 30 seconds we have left, do you think that these letters are going to have an impact? Do you think Governor Newsom is going to take them seriously? I, you know, I again, I, I haven't seen anything that he's reported out of his office. But look, EPA does have tools at its, at its disposal. Uh, EPA is able to enforce the Clean Air Act. Um, 
there are sanctions, for example, loss of highway funding. Um, if uh, the state doesn't take action to address these sorts of problems. So we'll see. Um, in any event, I think at least there may be now a more level playing field in terms of political rhetoric between uh, I agree. EPA <laughs> and, and California. <laughs> totally agree. Marlo Lewis, Competitive Enterprise Institute. Please tell our audience how they could follow your work, read your articles, and find out more about what the CEI is up to. Well, thank you, Rick. Yes, we, you can just click on CEI.org or just Google that or just type it in, uh, type in the URL, CEI.org, and uh, then you can look down at our blog, and uh, that's that's my, uh, my little piece on the dust-up between California and EPA is still on, uh, on the blog page. We, we, have, a, we have many uh, contributors, so it, it, after tomorrow, it may, you may have to dig a little for it, but you can also just dig under my name if you go to the, the thing that says experts and look down, you'll find me. All right, Marlo Lewis, thank you so much for joining us. Take care and God bless. Thank you very much, Rick and Sharon. On the other side of the Conservative Commandos radio show, we're going to be speaking with Reverend Ben Johnson. He's written a terrific article that I think should be the, the script for a documentary about what socialism really brings. His article is Hong Kong protesters shot as China communism turns 70. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our next guest, Reverend Ben Johnson. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. AMFM 24-7 Roku channel broadcasts all of our shows on demand. 
To ensure reliability, we store and stream our content on the same servers as Netflix and Amazon. Our Roku channel is free to use, and anyone owning one of the more than 10 million Roku devices can watch our channel at no cost whatsoever. If you have a television show or are thinking about producing a show, you can be a part of AMFM 24-7's Roku channel. Watch our great shows on your Roku device. It's free and more reliable than cable TV. Are you stuck with a timeshare? Did you attend the presentation and were seduced and enticed into buying that great vacation and investment? Now you're in the terrible position of trying to figure out a way to get out of that mess. You're not alone. For over 15 years, BuyYourTimeshare.com has been helping people like yourself get out of timeshare ownership. The fact is there is no resale market. Unscrupulous telemarketers call you and say they have buyers waiting, and the next thing that happens is you give them hundreds of dollars for an ad, and you'll never hear from them again. Another fact is that an identical timeshare to yours is being offered on eBay for a dollar, and no one is buying it. If you want out of your timeshare, I urge you to go to buyyourtimeshare.com or call them at 877-94-HELP-ME. That number again is 877-94-HELP-ME. Buyyourtimeshare.com. That's buyyourtimeshare.com. 877-94-HELP-ME. And once again, we want to welcome you back. Welcome you back for the way we have over the past 11 years and starting our 12th year this week. This is the Conservative Commandos radio show with yours truly, Rick Trader, and my co-host, Sharon Angle. And for rebroadcast of our shows, best place to go is our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Also, uh, please like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Sharon, we have a longtime friend of mine going back several years here in the Conservative Commandos. has been away for a while, but he's back with us, and please make that introduction. Well, thank you very much, Rick, and I am honored and pleased to introduce the Reverend Ben Johnson, who is a managing editor at Action Institute's flag pub flagship publication, Religion and Liberty. His writings have appeared in the UK Guardian, Human Events, The Stream, Real Clear Policy, uh, Conservative Review, The Daily Caller, and have been cited by National Review, CBS News, and Fox News. He was manager and editor at Front Page Magazine and the U.S. Bureau Chief at LifeSite News. He is the author of two books, on tax-exempt foundation as well as party of defeat and before turning to online journalism and editing he spent more than a decade in all facets of radio broadcasting including news and talk he is ordained by the eastern orthodox church ben johnson welcome to the conservative commandos radio show it's a pleasure to be with you sharon thank you well, it's our pleasure, and we want to talk to you, I think, about uh, something that we've been following for quite a while, most Americans have, because it's a, a real interest to us how China is treating Hong Kong. And you've now written an article, Hong Kong protesters shot as Chinese communism turned 70. How fitting. Uh, this sounds like Tiananmen Square all over again. Is that what we're seeing, or... Uh, you know, maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe they have turned over a new leaf, but this just sounds so familiar to me. If they've turned over a new leaf, I have no reason to believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly their actions over the past few days have given us no reason to believe it either. So uh, we've seen these protests that have been going on for four separate months in Hong Kong. Uh, remember, Hong Kong used to be a British province. It was turned over to uh, mainland China in 1997. And part of the promise in, in that treaty, which was signed by Margaret Thatcher, was that there would be one country but two separate systems. So China would have its communist system, but Hong Kong would maintain the sort of laws and uh, the jurisprudence that it always has. Carrie Lam, who is appointed by Beijing to oversee Hong Kong, tried to introduce a bill that would allow people to be extradited from Hong Kong to China to be tried in the Chinese system. <laughs> And so, obviously, uh, they, they realized exactly what would happen if that were allowed to take place. No jurisprudence, no, no rights of any kind, uh, and from that point forward, they would face persecution. So they've been rising up in the streets. Uh, heretofore, they've been pushed back. They, they take umbrellas, and that's how you know that they're protesting. They, 
they have umbrellas when it's sh when the sun's shining out. Right now, uh, they are usually hit with things like things like tear gas and water cannons. But as of yesterday, the police started using live ammunition, and they shot someone mm -hmm. at blank range in the chest. Well, and it's not just a somebody. This is sad. Um, a policeman shot. So this is now we're talking about an official of the government. Policeman shot an 18-year-old protester at point blank range. Uh, this wasn't just a shot in the crowd that kind of uh, misfired. He really intentionally killed this young man, didn't he? Well, he certainly did. He, he shot him point blank. Now, as far as we know, the man's still in stable but critical condition as of last I knew. But uh, he's he could easily slip away, and this could be the first of uh, many such uh, sort of Tiananmen Square incidents where uh, people are beginning to rise up. This was an 18-year-old protester, as you say, someone who was very concerned about his rights and about democracy. And if anything, this has done the exact opposite of what the Chinese hoped and thought that it would do which is that it's caused even greater protests today. Well, so on October 1st, 1949, that was the birth of the People's Republic, right? 70 years ago. Talk a little bit about their history. You said this is fitting. Uh, so here we have, um, go ahead, talk about Mao Zedong and, and socialism and this communist socialism that we see in China. Yeah, well, uh, with uh, the history of China, you're looking at uh, the most murderous regime in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. uh, at least 65 million people have been killed in China since uh, since the, uh, the dawn of communism. Uh, if you're like me, you've seen all these news reports, CBS, the BBC, all of all of them yesterday said China was celebrating 70 years of communism. And there is precious little to celebrate. Uh, as I say, that's essentially a million people a year, every year that they have been uh, under the yoke of communism. Uh, there was a civil war with Chiang Kai-shek, who was a U.S. ally, not a Democrat, but a dictator, but he was still allied with the United States, and moving in generally the right direction as the 1930s and 40s went forward. Uh, after the World War, uh, World War II, then the two factions went back to war, and uh, there, were, there were some communists in uh, the U.S. security system at that point, particularly in the State Department under FDR and Truman, who held up aid, who were giving Americans the idea that Mao Zedong was an agrarian reformer who had nothing to do with communism, and uh, they, were, they were fighting for their rights. So uh, they held up aid to Chiang Kai-shek, and ultimately uh, Chiang Kai-shek and his national party fled to Taiwan. Uh, they maintained their system there, and then, of course, Mao Zedong took over. And there were basically two huge periods of persecution, one of them uh, being particularly what was called the Great Leap Forward, in 1958 through 62, in four years, at least 45 million people were killed. Mm -hmm. More than 10 million a year. It was their drive to collectivize businesses and farms. They tried to force people together to collective farms. And so a lot of people died through famine, but then people were simply brutalized and driven uh, into, uh, into prison camps. About a third of the people who were in prison camps committed suicide, which Frank Potter is the great historian who researched all of these issues. So this is an era, uh, an era of intense persecution, uh, uh, both deliberate and uh, because communism always fails, there's inevitably an, an intense era of famine, uh, as there was at that time. Then there was uh, also the Cultural Revolution, where Mao Zedong had a real cult of personality, like Big Brother in 1984. His pictures were everywhere. They had the little red book of quotations of Mao Zedong. And... It was sort of a, an attempt to outdo, everyone wanted to outdo everyone else in being the top uh, supporter of Mao Zedong. And so there was a youth movement that really revered him. And so they began to attack and kill their fellow communists who they felt weren't Maoist enough. And when it was all said and done, a million and a half people at least were killed over the next 10 years until Mao Zedong himself finally mercifully had the uh, decency to die in 1976. Mm. <laughs> well... That's 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 what I remember. I guess uh, you know, having grown up with communist China, we also remember the sanctions that the U.S. had on China for their human human rights offenses, and and then all of a sudden we open it up. Now, it, it was that a good thing for us to do, or 
not the opening of China? Has it become a good thing for the Chinese or not? I mean, certainly we we have real mixed reviews on Hong Kong. Well, uh, Hong Kong uh, is certainly was negative. Uh, it was turned over in 1997. They they honored most of the agreements, but then they began to take away some of the agreements that they made. For example, uh, the idea that everyone would get to vote. Uh, they took that away in 2017, that not everyone has universal suffrage to choose their leader. And then, of course, the most recent uh, uh, outrage with, with uh, Carrie Lam and the extradition issue. But uh, you're right, there was a big change that came about. After Mao died, there was a struggle for power, and then Deng Xiaoping came to uh, power. And he learned something, which was that uh, he saw that the system was collapsing, and communism was going to collapse of its own weight. He learned it a little bit earlier than the Soviets. Gorbachev tried to stop the fall of the Soviet Union, of course, in the uh, 1980s. By then, it was far too late for the Soviets. China said, we can arrest this process. We'll give people just a little bit of stake and a little bit of ownership and a little bit of capitalism, but uh, it will be completely controlled. So the only way that you can actually make a living is dependent on your relationship with the government. And so you've seen this crystallized in our time in the social credit system, where people have little cards in their wallets, and if your social credit score is too low, that is, if you are caught hanging out with people who are critical of the Chinese government, or you aren't enthusiastic enough at the communist propaganda rallies, then suddenly you're, it's like your credit rating. Your credit rating goes down, and you lose out, and then at some point, uh, sometimes you can't even travel as a result of that. So they, they control every aspect of your life. Uh, and then taken the millions upon millions of dollars we've given them in trade, at one time they had a, a very poor um, poor class of workers, and uh, now they're fairly fairly prosperous for their region. Uh, but uh, at that time, they were cheap labor, so manufacturing companies went over. They said, if we can open up this market, we'll be amazing. And essentially, the process, if you want to work in China, is you, you have to bribe the Chinese government. And they tell you up front, we're going to steal your idea. As soon as we figure out how to make your product, we will start up a Chinese-owned business. We'll duplicate your product. We'll make it much cheaper, and you'll be out of business. But until then, you're going to have the best five to ten years you've ever had in your entire life, and you'll be set. So that's that's their model of so-called capitalism. Uh, it's simple expropriation. It's theft. It's intellectual theft. It's uh, sometimes genuine theft uh, and graft on top of all of it. So the most perfect form of crony capitalism known to man, and then they've taken all of that and invested it in their military and in enslaving their own people. Well, we have to go to a short break. We're talking here with Ben Johnson the Reverend Ben Johnson, about an article that he's written about the first protester who was killed in the uh, Hong Kong area, uh, shot by communism, and just as uh, China turned 70, he says, how fitting. We'll be right back to talk about there is a bright side, he says, if it can be called a bright side. We are coming to you from the Conservative Commandos Radio Studios and around the world on the Internet with the Talkstream Live, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, American Political Radio, Leading Edge Radio Network, and AM FM 24-7. And now you can watch us on the AUN TV network in Northern California. We'll be right back after this break. I'm Sharon Angle, and my co-host is Rick Trader. AM FM 24-7 Roku Channel broadcasts all of our shows on demand. To ensure reliability, we store and stream our content on the same servers as Netflix and Amazon. Our Roku channel is free to use, and anyone owning one of the more than 10 million Roku devices can watch our channel at no cost whatsoever. If you have a television show or are thinking about producing a show, you can be a part of AMFM 24-7's Roku channel. Watch our great shows on your Roku device. It's free and more reliable than cable TV. Are you stuck with a timeshare? Did you attend the presentation and were seduced and enticed into buying that great vacation and investment? Now you're in the terrible position of trying to figure out a way to get out of that mess. You're not alone. For over 15 years, BuyYourTimeshare.com has been helping people like yourself get out of timeshare ownership. The fact is there is no resale market. Unscrupulous telemarketers call you and say they have buyers waiting and the next thing that happens is you give them hundreds of dollars for an ad and you'll never hear from them again. Another fact is that an identical timeshare to yours is being offered on eBay for a dollar and no one is buying it. 
If you want out of your timeshare, I urge you to go to buyyourtimeshare.com or call them at 877-94-HELP-ME. That number again is 877-94-HELP-ME. Buyyourtimeshare.com. That's buyyourtimeshare.com. 877-94-HELP-ME. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. We want to welcome you back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. We want to give a shout-out one more time to folks who listen to us and on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Boulder and Colorado Springs, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and also seen on the AUN television network in Northern California in cities like Sacramento, San Jose, San Francisco, Reading, and you get it, Northern California. Our guest this segment is Reverend Ben Johnson. He's the managing editor of the Action Institute flagship publication, Religion and Liberty. Reverend Johnson, thank you so much for joining us here on the Conservative Commandos radio show and also holding through that break. I can call you Ben. I've known you so long. <laughs> ben, I was saying to Sharon Angle before our show today. If I had the wherewithal to do, I would take your article and use it for the basis of a script for a documentary. For all the people out there who feel that socialism is the answer, that socialism should be instituted in our country, Ben, this is quite a history lesson. And if it's not made into a documentary, this article should be taught to every student in every school. Powerful, powerful piece. I want to congratulate you on that. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm humbled by that. Well, I, I truly, truly, truly mean it. Uh, ben, in your article, and, and I say this all the time here on Conservative Commandos, our guest, my co-host, become my teachers, and I am their student. I learned so much, so much about the history of communist China in your article. And also, in reading it, I learned something about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Please tell us about how Franklin Delano Roosevelt played a part in appointing, in appointing Low, uh, Owen Latimer and how that led to maybe the formation of communist China. Well, it, it certainly did not help uh, whatsoever. Yeah, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, he, was, he was fairly upfront about his, uh, his uh, association with some known communists. Uh, he, he was always uh, said to have said that uh, uh, he had nothing against communists. Some of his very best friends were communists, he said. And he didn't say that ironically the way that we sometimes say it uh, about having good friends. He really meant it. Uh, at that time, it was understood that conservatism was dead. It had caused the, uh, the Great Depression. Anyone who was a conservative was, was, was out to lunch. Uh, sounds kind of familiar in our day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Franklin Roosevelt, uh, it was understood that the left was in the ascendancy and uh, the, sort of the vanguard of the left has been the communist movement. So uh, he had an advisor named Lachlan Curry. Uh, Curry, we found out from Soviet documents, was a Soviet intelligent agent. Uh, we, we know that. We know that he cooperated with uh, espionage on behalf of the Soviet Union. 
he suggested that uh, FDR appoint, appoint a man named Owen Lattimore. Owen Lattimore was with a group called the Institute for Pacific Studies. It was later named as the Communist Front Organization. He presented a glowing picture of Mao Zedong. Uh, as we said in the uh, last segment, he presented Mao Zedong as an agrarian reformer. These, these were peasants rising up against the brutal dictator, Chiang Kai-shek. And um, matter of fact, the blurb to one of his books said that uh, what, uh, what Owen Lattimore had found was that uh, Chinese peasants enjoy watching theories of democracy rather than hearing uh, theories of democracy from Anglo-Saxons. They prefer democracy that they can see across the border in the Soviet Union. So they believe very much democracy was what was being practiced uh, in, by the Kremlin. So uh, Curry had Lattimore named as uh, special agent to Chiang Kai-shek. Yeah, you know, this this is like uh, naming um, you know, naming uh, uh, someone uh, uh, naming uh, um, Yasser Arafat as a special advisor to uh, uh, Bin Laden, or, or Bin Laden as a special advisor to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu or something. So, uh, Lattimore uh, essentially uh, continued this process of painting uh, the uh, the Maoists as uh, as reformers, and then along came another gentleman by the name of Harry Dexter White, who is a Treasury official and uh, also a, a, a known communist according to the Venona transcripts. It was his job, uh, there was a runaway inflation under Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang was begging for U.S. aid to try and hold off. Please re please and, remind our audience who Chiang Kai-shek was. Oh, I mean, it, not it, every all it, our audience is as old as dirt as I am who may not know who that is. Or, uh, or likewise, myself, I, I resemble that remark. But uh, yeah, uh, Chiang Kai-shek really. was, was, was the leader of... Uh, of uh, of China before Mao Zedong, so up until 1949. And uh, Chiang Kai-shek was pro-U.S. He was a dictator, but, but he was pro-American in his effect. So uh, he, was, he was more aligned with us, certainly, than Mao Zedong ever was. Uh, Chiang was undermined, and uh, Harry Dexter White was this known communist who was named in Soviet documents later on. Chiang Kai-shek was begging for USA to try and hold the Maoists off, to try and maintain uh, his, his hold on uh, on China as much as he could. Harry Dexter White held off as much as he could. We were supposed to give two hundred million dollars in gold, and he dribbled it out until Chiang Kai-shek collapsed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was that was something that was done uh, at, that uh, really helped facilitate the triumph of communism, where otherwise it may not have, or it certainly would have, it would not have been in power uh, as the People's Republic of China seventy years ago yesterday. Mm -hmm. You also write in your article, Mao soon won the support of Joseph Stalin and took part in wars against the United States and Korea directly and Vietnam indirectly, and let me say this, costing thousands of American lives. Could you make that connection? Talk about that a little bit. Uh, very personally, the uh, when it comes to uh, Korea, of course, the, the United States uh, under Harry Truman sent troops to try and prevent uh, North Korea from overrunning South Korea. We ended up uh, essentially just cutting the island, uh, cutting the peninsula in half. And mm -hmm. so now the North, when you look at it from a space shot at night, uh, it's as though there wasn't a single light anywhere in Northern Korea. South Korea is one of the leading economies in the entire world, one of the Asian tigers, together with Hong Kong and, and Taiwan, people that rejected the communist model. Uh, but. Uh, China sent its troops under under Mao Zedong, and they directly fought Americans. And you're right, cost thousands of American lives, including my grandfather. Wow! So, I, my grandfather died in the Korean War when my uh, my uncle was two years old, my mother was a year old, and my aunt was six weeks old. Wow! So, felt that absence our entire lives. Uh, I don't say that that's prejudiced me in favor, but I hope that my article is still accurate. In terms of its its material, I don't think that I'm unduly unbiased to present them in an unduly negative light. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Vietnam, they uh, allowed the trafficking of uh, of weapons to North Vietnam, and they promised that they would invade at one point if uh, if North, uh, Vietnam were on the verge of collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, most of most of it was equipment and material that was uh, allowed to go on through the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Reverend Ben Johnson, talk about the the. At one point, there were two Chinas. Could could you talk a little bit about the two Chinas and the U.S. recognition of China versus yeah, uh, Taiwan? 
Right. So uh, both halves of China have always said there's only one China. They both believed in a one China policy. When Chiang Kai-shek and the National Party fled mainland China because they'd been driven out by Mao, they, so they set up their government. Uh, the Kuomintang was in charge of the island of Taiwan. And for years, Taiwan had an economy that was several times the size of, of uh, mainland China with just this tiny island with no resources. They made it work. We recognized Chiang Kai-shek and the National Party as the actual government of China as a whole. That held until 1971. The United Nations was really the first group that made a, a pitch here. Uh, there was a, a committee and a movement to try and give the UN security seat that uh, was controlled by China, take it away from Taiwan and give it to Beijing. And the United Nations did so. And then uh, the following year, Richard Nixon, because there had been a split between uh, the Soviet Union and China, we thought the Soviet Union was the much bigger threat. And so if we could split these two, play them off against each other, then uh, we would be able to triumph over communism that much faster. And you can argue about the geopolitics of it. Henry Kissinger was very much on board. But Nixon, uh, Nixon came along. Then in 1978, December 15th of 1978, President Jimmy Carter made the announcement that from this point forward, we would only recognize one China, and it would be mm -hmm. Beijing, not Taiwan. Ben Johnson, one of the problems with conservative commandos, we only have a limited time with the guests like you. This this interview, I believe, can go on for a couple hours. But Sharon mentioned a bright side, and also I wanted you to tell the story of the 18 farmers in a village that signed a secret pact to return their collective farm into private parcels of land and how these 18 farmers might have led China to where it is coming today, being an economic power of the world. Well, they certainly did. It was 18 farmers in one little village uh, had made a pact. They were starving to death. And they said, from now on, regardless of what happens to us, we're going to cut up our collective farm and everyone will own a parcel. And you keep whatever you own. Whatever grows on your land, you and your family can use to, the, to their own resources. They even made a, a provision in this little pact, which they signed by candlelight. Mm -hmm. What did communists use before electric before candles? Electricity. Uh, you know, they didn't have electricity at this point. So in 1978, by candlelight, they're signing this, and they made a, a promise: if the authorities came and arrested them and killed them, the other members of the village would raise their orphan children. As it turned out, the uh, the communists liked the idea. They saw the productivity, and they said, "This is the key." So they opened up just a little bit of private ownership. And again, you have to be on board simpatico with the communist leadership. If not, then your social credit score will, will be destroyed. You could disappear in the middle of the night. And if you don't, then uh, you simply won't be able to purchase anything. But because they instituted this and because of its massive population, the fact that they were willing to, uh, to produce at a low level, China became a great economic superpower in terms mm. of what it's producing. So. Uh, it was allowed into the World Trade Organization in 2001 with a bipartisan support of Bush and Clinton, and uh, its economy has just magnified and magnified over the years. It's grown uh, this past year, according to government figures, at 6.5%, 6.6%, or maybe we could say 6.66%. And uh, mm, that's. There you go. <laughs> that percentage was low for them historically. They've been growing by double digits for a decade. Uh, and again, they've taken all of that money and put it into weapons where they can threaten their neighbors, and they've threatened at various times to nuke the United States. But all of that has been made possible because they learned a little bit of commun a little bit of uh, capitalism can go a very long way building prosperity. And you can make, uh, you can't make a very effective cage if you can't afford to build uh, the prisons. Ben Johnson, uh, the clock's telling me, and we've gone a little long. I can, I can, I make the rules. I can change the rules. If I'd like to keep you for a little bit longer because I have two other issues I want to talk with you about. The the one child policy of China and also what has abortion done to China? Well just to, to go very quickly, I, I do have a, another interview at six twenty, but uh, I'm awful sorry, Ben. Oh no, not at all. But uh, the one child policy has decimated China. It was the it was just recently relaxed so that uh, people could have two children in certain circumstances. Now it's a two child policy essentially but, uh, of course, China had a billion people, and they had no way to feed them, particularly uh, because of the famine that comes about because of collective ownership. So in 1980, they, they instituted a one-child policy that uh, you could only have one child, and if you had more than that, 
there would be a forcible abortion. Whether you wanted mm -hmm. the child or did not want the child was irrelevant. Uh, a woman would be kidnapped by the fertility police. They have a whole unit that does nothing more than grab women off the street, oh my God. pregnant yeah. women at nine months gestation, if they were able to hide that long, and a forcible abortion will be performed. There have been images of this that have been shown. Matter of fact, you created a, uh, I believe you created a, uh, an ad yes, that did. For those images. God bless you. So uh, that's, it's incredibly intrusive what's, what's happened. And, it, and finally, the Chinese have realized that they don't have another generation. Young men can't get married. Uh, they don't have any women to marry them off to because they they abort women because men are stronger. If you're going to lay you mention in your article, seventy seven percent of the population is male. Uh, 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 of the uh, Communist Party, the Communist Party, seventy four percent, I think, of the uh, the members of the Communist Party of China are male. All so right. you talk about uh, imposing a man's choice on a woman, uh, but here <laughs> it's in favor of abortion instead of against. Well, Ben Johnson, we'll let you go. But uh, again, great article. I encourage all our listeners and viewers to read it. Where can they find it? How can they follow your work? Uh, I'm at the Acton Institute. You can find that acton.org or blog.acton, A-C-T-O-N dot O-R-G. And uh, look me up there. Find the article. And, um, of course, remember to listen to Conservative Commandos. <laughs> Reverend Ben Johnson. Ben, it's great to see you again. Take care and God bless. God bless you. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and yours truly, Rick Trader. Sharon and I will be back with more right after this quick break. Have you been leasing a property for your business or renting storage space? Are you tired of paying rent year after year? Call the experts at General Steel to own a building at up to 30% off now. I'd been renting a building and paying someone else's mortgage, but General Steel showed me how I could own a space tailored to the needs of my business and for less than renting. Call General Steel now at the number on your screen for our current building specials and to price your metal building system today. My building's the dream I've had since finishing my house 14 years ago. I've been using it for a garage, workshop, and storage area for my tools and equipment, and I can't believe how great it turned out. The economy is improving, and the price of steel is expected to rise. Stop waiting. It could cost you thousands. Call General Steel now to see how you can own for less than you thought. Stop waiting to start your business or expand your operation. Call General Steel now. Call 877-484-7002. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Well, Sharon, that just about wraps it up for today's show. Wow, three great guests. And as I said, 
Our last guest, Reverend Ben Johnson, I wish they'd take his article. I wish somebody would take his article and make a documentary out of it or a lesson plan for students in our schools about what socialism, what communism really is. Sharon, I want to thank you for sitting in as my co-host. Can you please tell our audience how they could follow what you do? Certainly, they can follow me at SharonAngle.com, SharonAngle.com. And I'd like to thank all of our guests. Uh, we had Tim Bryce, of course, of the Bryce's Right, talking about impeachment. Who are they trying to kid? We had uh, Marlo Lewis from the Competitive Enterprise Institute talking about the Environmental Protection Agency saying to California, clean up your act. And finally, our last guest. Uh, Reverend Ben Johnson of Acton Institute's flagship publication, Religion and Liberty, talking about Hong Kong protesters shot as Chinese communism turned 70. How fitting. Um, excellent, excellent um, information today. It was fun to do the show, and uh, as always, we just learned so much. Indeed we did. Indeed we did. But for right now, we're out of time. We got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow on TV and on radio.